أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذا and when مس الإنسان it touched the human being what touched the human being ضر any pain any adversity the word must gives the meaning of touching and it also gives the meaning of إصابة remember to reach to affect إصابة to reach to affect to befall so وَإِذَا مَسَّ insan When the ضُرْ When the harm Reaches a human being When it affects a human being And the word ضُرْ Is a very general word ضَضْرَرَ It gives a meaning of A harm Or a disadvantage That a person suffers A harm or a disadvantage That a person suffers Where? In his nafs in his badan or in his wealth circumstances any kind of harm any kind of disadvantage any kind of deprivation any distress that a person suffers whether it's in his heart in his mind in his feelings in his physical body in his wealth in his relationships in his circumstances any kind of harm what does it mean by al-insan over here? First of all, al-insan over here, al is understood as al of ahd. Now what does ahd mean? Specific person. The al of ahd, the lam tarif of ahd, gives the meaning of specific person. And this specific person is the disbeliever. And others say that al-insan over here describes not the disbeliever, but a particular type of person, whether he's a disbeliever or any other. Whoever has this trait in him. So, وَإِذَا مَسَّ الْإِنسَانَ ضُرٌ When the dhur touches a human being, any shidda, any disease, any physical harm, material or mental distress, what does he do? Da'a, he called out. Rabbahu, his Rabb. How? Muniban ilay. One repeatedly turning to him. To who? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Munib is from the root. Noon wa We have done the word anaba earlier. And inaba is to turn repeatedly. What does it mean? To return repeatedly. Whether in repentance or for any other purpose. But what's the main thing? To return repeatedly. The word naub, noon wa which is from the same root, is also used for a honeybee. Why? Because it repeatedly returns to its hive several times a day. Isn't it so? So munib, what does it mean by munib? One who turns repeatedly to who? Ilayhi, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does it mean by da'a rabbahu muniban ilayhi? He calls upon his Rabb, turning to him repeatedly. What does it mean by that? That he's making dua all the time. He is turning to Allah throughout the day. During the day, during the night. Every time the thought of the dur comes, what does he do? What does he do? He turns to Allah. When we're in difficulty, what do we do? After every few minutes, we'll just call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, وَإِذَا مَسَّ الْإِنسَانَ الضُرٌ دَعَ رَبَّهُ مُنِيبًا إِلَيْهِ Not just once or twice. Not just once a day. But every time he suffers the pain, every time... It gets worse, it gets difficult to bear, he turns to Allah. Summa then, Ida when Khawalahu Nirmatan, he granted him a blessing. Who granted him a blessing? Minhu from him. Meaning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The word khawala is from the root khawawlam. Khawawlam. And khawl means to manage or to look after something. What does it mean? To manage or to look after something. And khawwala, with the tashdeed and the wow, is from the mustard takhweel. Khawwala yukhawwilu takhweel. Nazzala yunazzilu tanzil. So khawwala yukhawwilu takhweel. Takhweel is to give someone such a thing that requires maintenance. To grant such a thing to someone that requires maintenance. Do you understand? Can you give me an example? Like for example a car. You can give someone a car 
and they have to look after it. They have to put gas in it. They have to keep cleaning it. They have to get the oil changed. They have to do so many other things. Pets, animals, house, any business, plants, even food. So it is basically to give someone something that requires maintenance, that needs to be looked after. So إِذَا خَوَّلَهُ نِعْمَةً مِّنْهُ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants him a blessing from himself. And ni'ma, it is said that it is such a thing that cannot be paid back for. You cannot pay back for it. Somebody gives you a gift, you can give them a better gift in return. For example. And you feel as though, okay, the ihsan is over. For example, you might feel like that. But ni'ma is such a thing, it is such a blessing that you cannot put a price tag on it. You cannot put a price tag on it. So, ثُمَّ إِذَا خَوَّلَهُ نِعْمَةً مِّنْهُ When Allah bestows a blessing upon this person who was desperate for this nirma, what could it be? For example, good health. Can you put a price tag on it? No. Children, family, a spouse. So a person was suffering from loss before. He didn't have a child desperate for a child. A person was desperate for a job. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives it to him. خَوَّلَهُ نِعْمَةً مِّنْهُ Notice مِّنْهُ Meaning it's exclusively from Allah. No one else could give that to him. No doctor could bring it. No boss could bring it. No friend could bring it. Only Allah gives it to him. ثُمَّ إِذَا خَوَّلَهُ نِعْمَةً مِّنْهُ If you notice, the person was calling upon Allah for the removal of the distress. But what is mentioned over here? That Allah gives him a blessing. Because blessing includes two things. It includes removal of distress and it also includes receiving some benefit. It includes both the things. And when only the ni'mah is mentioned, what does it show? That Allah did not only remove the distress from him, but He also gave him more than he asked for. So it shows more of a favor from Allah. And it's very true that a person prays for one thing, but Allah gives him more than one. So, ثُمَّ إِذَا خَوَّلَهُ نِعْمَةً مِّنْهُ What's the reaction of the person? نَسِيَ مَا كَانَ يَدْرُوا إِلَيْهِ He forgets that which he was calling to. What does it mean by this? نَسِيَ مَا كَانَ يَدْرُوا إِلَيْهِ مَا كَانَ is understood in several ways. First of all, the difficulty. That he was praying to Allah, he was calling Allah to that difficulty. Why? So that Allah would remove that difficulty from him. And ma is also understood as whom, meaning the one whom he was calling upon. And who is that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah gives him a blessing, and very soon what happens? He forgets that he had been praying to Allah for years. He had been praying to Allah for months, for days. And Allah answered his prayers and removed his difficulty and gave him more than what he asked for. And he forget Allah even. نَسِيَ مَا كَانَ يَدْرُوا إِلَيْهِ مِنْ قَبْلُ Before. Before what? Before the ni'mah was given to him. And instead of remaining sincere to Allah, what happens? وَجَعَلَ لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادًا He sets rivals for Allah. Now this we may think that it means that he's setting up partners with Allah, meaning he's associating partners with Allah, he's doing shit. Now it happens with many people. Like for example, they will go to graves, they will pray to Allah, they will go for Hajj, they will go for Umrah. People will do many, many things. Just anything to have their dua answered. And they know that Allah is the one who answers that dua. But once that dua is answered, what do they do? They go and thank others. They say that I went to the rawdah of so and so dead saint and then my prayers were granted I offered sacrifice for this saint and then my dua was answered وَجَعَلَ لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادًا and also if you think about it وَجَعَلَ لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادًا what kind of rivals does he set with Allah that he gets lost in the apparent means in the asbab that because of this doctor because of that friend because of this boss, because of so and so, my difficulty was removed. I got this job, I got this money, I got this car, I got that, I got that. This is what he does. وَجَعَلَ لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادًا لِيُبِلَّ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ And as a result, what does he do? He leads other people astray. 
from the way of Allah. This lamb over here, remember lamb is of different types. Sometimes lamb is of illah, of reason, and other times lamb is of aqibah, of consequence. So as a result of his reaction, which reaction? Forgetting Allah, forgetting his past, and instead setting partners with Allah, forgetting Allah and thanking others. As a result, what happens? He misleads others from the way of Allah. So his own action is wrong, and as a result, he also misleads others. How does this happen? That when he sits with other people, and they ask him, they congratulate him, that, you know, congratulations, this happened, that happened, you know, you were so upset, but thank God that difficulty has been removed. He does not mention Allah at that time. He only mentions the means. And he forgets to mention Allah even. Rarely ever does the statement Alhamdulillah come out of his mouth. He will mention the doctor. He will mention all those people. But he will not mention Allah. As a result, what is he doing? Is he promoting the culture of gratitude? No. Is he promoting the culture of the way of turning to Allah in times of difficulty? No. What is he promoting? That when you're in difficulty call upon that person when you're ill go get a referral from a good doctor for a good specialist and you come to me and I will give you the link to that doctor so he's not guiding people to Allah but instead he's guiding people away from Allah because what are people looking at he was in difficulty look his problem was solved he didn't pray to God he adopted means and yes, we should also do the same. Why waste time in praying? Do something. And unfortunately, so many people believe in this today. That in times of difficulty, they think praying is a waste of time. And you have to, you know, adopt the means. You have to look here. You have to look there. You have to do everything yourself. So, as a result, this person is promoting the way of not turning to Allah, but turning to other than Allah. لِيُبِلَّ عَنْ سَبِيلِ and he's enjoying his life now. He's enjoying the blessings that Allah has given him. So Allah says, قُلْ تَمَتَّعْ بِكُفْرِكَ قَلِيلًا Say, enjoy your kufr for a little while. This reaction is called kufr. Which reaction? Of ingratitude, of forgetting Allah, of thanking others besides Allah. This reaction is the way of kufr. So Allah says, قُلْ تَمَتَّعْ بِكُفْرِكَ قَلِيلًا Say, enjoy your kufr for a little while. And qalilan is understood as qalil in muddah, in time, meaning for a short while, for some time. Because, for example, a person was ill. He was praying to Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him shifa. And instead of thanking Allah, instead of remembering Allah, he remembers the hospital, he remembers all the nurses, and he remembers all the doctors. And this is what he talks about. And while he is ill, he says, when I get better, Allah, I will do this, I will pray. But what happens? When he is better, he does not pray. He does not thank Allah. He prays only for a few days and then he goes back to his normal routine. So, قُلْ تَمَتَّعَ بِكُفْرِكَ قَلِيلًا How long will you enjoy your health? For how many more years? 20 years? 15 years? 30 years? If you think about it, it is still a short time. It's not eternity. So, قُلْ تَمَتَّعْ بِكُفْرِكَ قَلِيلًا قَلِيل is also understood as قَلِيل in كَيْفِيَّةِ In its type. Meaning the enjoyment will be little. The enjoyment will be little in the sense that no matter how much a person enjoys in this dunya. Still, aren't there deficiencies in that enjoyment? Aren't there problems in that enjoyment? Isn't it so? Like for example, a person may have health now. But, is that health perfect health? No. He still has to keep going to the doctors. He still has to keep going to get those injections, to take those medicines. So, قُلْ تَمَتَّعْ بِكُفْرِكَ قَلِيلًا Even when you have received this blessing, it's not going to be perfect enjoyment. And thirdly, قَلِيل also in kamiyya, in quantity. That compared to the hereafter, the enjoyment is very little. So, قُلْ تَمَتَّعْ بِكُفْرِكَ قَلِيلًا إِنَّكَ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ النَّارِ Indeed, you are of the companions of the fire. This is something very scary. This is a very stern threat, a very severe warning for a person who is described in this verse. The one who remembers Allah in difficult times, and then when good times come, he completely forgets Allah. 
as if he never prayed to Allah. If you think about it, each and every person, every single individual, in his life he experiences a time where he finds himself trapped in a difficulty, where he feels there is no escape, he cannot find a way out. Initially what happens? When a person is in a problem, in a difficulty, he looks up to other people, hoping that they will help him, hoping that they can find a solution, hoping that they can do something for him. He looks around, he struggles himself, and then a point comes where he knows, no one can help me. No one can help me, nothing can relieve me of this problem. So who does he turn upon? Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And every single person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings him in this situation. It could be for a few moments, it could be for a few hours, it could be for days, it could be for months. But every single person goes through this. So what happens then? He finds himself completely helpless. No one can help him. The situation is not favorable. Friends don't understand. Family is not cooperative. And he turns only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely. He keeps making dua. He keeps turning to Allah. And then what happens? Allah accepts his dua. And when his dua is accepted, he says to himself, I know this is only from Allah. And look at the power of dua. He's so overjoyed And his iman becomes so strong at that moment But then what happens after some time? He goes back to how he was before He forgets the difficult times that he experiences And he gets so lost in the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him That he forgets about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completely When he was in difficulty He made promises That I will do this, I will do that and he thought to himself, now I'm going to change. But then when the difficulty is removed, the blessings come, then a person completely forgets Allah. And unfortunately, this is very, very common. That we tend to remember Allah only in hard times. And when good times come, we get so lost in them, it's as though we never experienced any difficulty. Like for example, a person is praying, making dua, Oh Allah, give me a child, give me a child. Constantly making dua. And some people, they're desperately asking everyone, make dua for me, make dua for me, make dua for me. And finally, when they have a child, then what happens? Where do their prayers go? Their salah, gone. Their ibadah, gone. Recitation of Quran, gone. Before they would read Quran regularly. And after that, they would make dua. Before they would pray consistently, and after that, they would make dua. But now that Allah has granted a child, instead of remembering Allah more, thanking Allah more, a person forgets Allah completely. This is the way that is mentioned over here. And usually it doesn't happen that a person forgets Allah immediately. No, it happens over time. Gradually. Why does it happen? Because of lack of gratitude. Because if a person were grateful, then he would never ever forget the mun'im, the one who has given him that blessing in the first place. Every time he would see the blessing, he would be filled with feelings of gratitude. He would not complain. He would not forget Allah, but rather he would be very grateful. So when does a person forget Allah? Because of lack of gratitude. This is the reason. And he goes back to how he was before. But if you think about it, despite this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is so merciful. If you think about it, this fluctuation, these ups and downs, they keep coming in our lives. For a few days we're making dua to Allah a lot, and then a few days we don't make a single dua. And then for a few months we're constantly making dua. And then for a few months we don't even remember Allah. But still, despite that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He does not punish us immediately. He does not deprive us of the blessings. He does not take the blessings away instantly. Does it ever happen that a person has been given a blessing that he was desperate for, and because he was not grateful enough, Allah took that blessing away? It happens. However, very rarely. Usually people get their blessings, they forget Allah, they are so lost in them, but still Allah lets them enjoy. He lets them enjoy. But this enjoyment, what is this? This is respite. Isn't it so? That a person is not being caught instantly, but rather he is allowed to enjoy. This is why Allah says, قُلْ تَمَتَّعْ بِكُفْرِكَ قَلِيلًا Enjoy for some time. 
This is mentioned elsewhere in the Quran as well. In Surah Yunus, ayah 12, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا مَسَّ الْإِنسَانَ الضُّرْ دَعَانَا لِجَنْبِهِ أَوْ قَاعِدًا أَوْ قَائِمًا فَلَمَّا كَشَفْنَا عَنْهُ ضُرَّهُ مَرَّ كَأَلْ لَمْ يَدْعُنَا إِلَى ضُرٍ مَسَّهُ That when difficulty touches man, he calls upon us, whether lying on his side, or sitting, or standing. But when we remove from him his affliction, he continues in disobedience as if he had never called upon us to remove an affliction that touched him. It's as though he never made dua. This is how he reacts. This is why in Surah Al-Adiyat, Ayah 6, Allah says, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لِرَبِّهِ لَكَنُودٍ That indeed, the human being to his Lord is very ungrateful. Very ungrateful. That Allah keeps giving him and he keeps forgetting Allah. Now, it's only natural that in hard times, in difficult times, you end up making more dua. It's only natural to do that. Over here, what is being condemned is not that a person is making more dua in times of distress. No. What is being condemned over here is making more dua in times of distress and forgetting Allah when a person receives the blessing. This is not right. Your worship may increase. Your dua may increase. Every day, you may not wake up for tahajjud. You may not make long du'as. But when you are grief-stricken, naturally you will want to make more du'a. It will happen. There will be an increase. However, in good times, a person must not forget Allah. He must remain grateful. This is what is required of us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves from His servants that they remain grateful to Him in all circumstances. When they receive any blessing, when they're enjoying any blessing, they remember Allah. And you see a grateful person, he doesn't need big things to be grateful for. He will be grateful for even the morsel of food that he's putting in his mouth. The example of Imam Ahmad that I mentioned to you, that he would eat every morsel and he would say, Alhamdulillah. He would thank Allah for that enjoyment even, for that bite of food even. And it's unfortunate that we have one delicious bite after the other, spoonful of dessert after the other but we forget to thank Allah at the beginning, in the middle and even at the end this is not right so ikhlas leads to gratitude and gratitude leads to ikhlas أَمَّنْ هُوَ قَانِتٌ آنَا اللَّيْلِ is one who is devoutly obedient during periods of the night now another person is being mentioned Amman or the one who meaning who is better who is more grateful who is the true servant of Allah the one who remembers Allah only in hard times and forgets him when he receives a blessing or the one who is qanitun one who is obedient devoutly obedient ana al-layli during the hours of the night how is he devoutly obedient sajidan wa qa'iman making sajda as one who is prostrating to Allah and qa'iman as one who is standing in qiyam before Allah qanit is from qunut and what is qunut? to be devoutly obedient it has several meanings qunut has the meaning of to be obedient with khushur with khudur with humility and also with dawam that a person is continuously obedient not just in hard times but also in good times not just in times of difficulty and distress, but also in times of ease. So, Amman who waqanitun, he is devoutly obedient in the hours of the night. Ana is the plural of inyun, hamza nunya. And inyun is used for a period of the night, not necessarily 60 minutes, one hour, but a period of the night. So, during the hours of the night, he is obedient before Allah, devoting himself in worship and what kind of worship is he performing? Sajidan doing sajda before Allah because when a person is in sajda he is in the closest position to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Sajidan Waqa'iman and standing in qiyam standing in prayer reciting the Qur'an in sajda making dua in qiyam reciting the Qur'an because when you want to talk to Allah what do you do? make dua and when you want to listen to Allah, then what do you do? Recite the Qur'an. Sajidan wa qa'iman. 
But what's the motivational force? What is the driving force? Why is he standing in prayer? Is it because he's suffering from a distress, from some difficulty, and he wants a difficulty to be removed? The reason is, يَحْذَرُ الْآخِرَةَ He fears the hereafter. He is cautious of the hereafter. وَيَرْجُوا رَحْمَةَ رَبِّهِ And he hopes for the mercy of his Lord. يَحْذَرُ حِذْرُ And what does حِذْرُ mean? To be afraid of something and because of that take caution from before. You are afraid that it's going to harm you. So you take caution in order to protect yourself. So he is afraid of the hereafter. But this is not just a claim that yes, I fear the hereafter. I'm very afraid of Hisab. No. He is doing something. He's taking some caution. يَحْذَرُ الْآخِرَةَ وَيَرْجُوا رَحْمَةَ رَبِّي And he hopes for the mercy of his Lord. الْآخِرَةَ What is that he fears about it? The punishment in the hereafter. And what's the mercy that he hopes for? Paradise, reward, forgiveness. So this is the reason why he is standing in the night worshipping Allah, prostrating before him. You see, one is that a person wakes up because of some problems. He is restless. He is unable to sleep. He keeps tossing and turning in bed. Why? Because of the anxiety, because of the distress, because of the problems that he's suffering from. And when he cannot sleep, he says, might as well get up and pray. Or he thinks that this problem is so big, I need Allah's help for it. So he remembers that in the tahajjud time, I should get up and pray to Allah. So he gets up and prays. Why? To get some benefit from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the other hand, is a person who wakes up to remember Allah. Why? Because he is afraid of the hereafter. He is concerned about akhirah. One person is concerned about dunya only. And the other person is concerned about his hereafter. Now, over here again, remember, what is being condemned is not that a person should not be praying for relief in dunya. No. So next time you have a problem, you say, no, no, since I don't worship Allah every day, I don't pray tahajjud every day, therefore I shouldn't pray tahajjud right now. No. Whenever Allah gives you tawfiq, do it. What is being condemned is the treachery, that you remember Allah in bad times and you forget Him in good times. This is what is blameworthy. And on top of that is the level of ihsan, that a person doesn't just remember Allah in bad times, but also in good times. And in good times, he's not lost in the blessings, but rather he's still afraid of the hereafter. That is the worry, that is the concern that is keeping him restless at night. That wakes him up at night. He cannot stay sleeping anymore because he's afraid of standing before his Lord. He's afraid of giving hisab. He's afraid of the scales when the deeds will be weighed. So because of that he gets up and he worships Allah. And at the same time he hopes for reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remember, the Prophet ﷺ, he would get up and pray as well. Isn't it so? In the middle of the night, during the night, he would stand up and pray to the point that his feet would swell up. And people would say, why do you do that? And what would he say? Afala akuna abdan shakura. Should I not be a grateful servant? So this ayah describes who? This part of the ayah describes a grateful servant. A sincere servant. The one who is constantly obedient to Allah and he's not just praying for the removal of worldly distress but he's concerned about the eternal distress in the hereafter and you see this fear of the hereafter eternal distress in the hereafter this is what really motivates a person to do more he does not remain content with less it makes him restless so, أَمَّنْ هُوَ قَانِتٌ آنَاءَ اللَّيْلِ سَاجِدًا وَقَائِمًا يَحْذَرُ الْآخِرَةَ وَيَرْجُوا رَحْمَةَ رَبِّهِ And he holds for a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now primarily what is being mentioned over here is Tahajjud Salah. But Tahajjud Salah far, Fajr Salah even. We have to think about it. That many times, why is it that we are unable to get up? Or when is it that we get up very quickly? Usually we'll get up very quickly when we want something. That because I want this particular blessing, I should pray all my five salahs on time. And if I don't pray on time, that Allah will not give me. There's a selfish reason. Isn't it so? But 
Above that is true devotion, sincere devotion, true fear of Allah, because of which a person will get up and pray. And what is that? يَحْذَرُ الْآخِرَةَ وَيَرْجُوا رَحْمَةَ رَبِّهِ When a person has fear of the hereafter and he hopes for reward from Allah. That even if no one is watching, no one is watching, no one's going to find out at what time you got up and prayed, whether you prayed or not. But what's the fear? That Allah knows. And I will be questioned about my salah in the hereafter. يَحْذَرُ الْآخِرَةَ وَيَرْجُوا رَحْمَةَ رَبِّهِ Hoping for reward from Allah. He gets up and he prays. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qul, say, هَلْ يَسْتَوَى الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Those people who know and those people who don't know, are they the same? Are they equal? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking, are they the same? They're not the same. هَلْ يَسْتَوَى الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ They're not the same in any way. No matter what kind of knowledge it is. If you think about it, a person who has knowledge of medicine, and a person who does not have knowledge of medicine. Are they the same? No, they're not. A person who has knowledge of medicine, when you ask him about a particular problem that you're suffering from, he will tell you what to do, what not to do. And a person who does not know, if he says something, are you going to believe in him? No. Even if he says it with a lot of force, you're not going to take his word. Isn't it? Similarly, when it comes to science, when it comes to chemistry, when it comes to so many things, we know that people who have knowledge and people who don't have knowledge, they're not the same. Someone who has knowledge will be given the job. The one who does not have knowledge will not be given the job. Now the same thing is with the knowledge of the deen as well. That those who know and those who don't know are not the same. They are very, very different. Why? Because those who know, they will bring about a change in their action. And those who don't know, Will they bring about any change in their action? No, they won't. What's the first step to reformation? Improvement, learning, knowledge, awareness. When you're aware, only then you will be concerned about changing your state. So, قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ No, they're not the same. And true knowledge, what is it? Action. True knowledge is amal. It is said, مَنْ لَمْ يَعْمَلْ فَهُوَ غَيْرْ عَالِمْ The one who does not do amal on what he knows, he is not an alim. He does not know. So, the one who knows and the one who does not know, they're not the same. The one who acts on the knowledge and the one who does not act on the knowledge, they're not the same. إِنَّمَا يَتَذَكَّرُ أُلُوا الْأَلْبَابِ Indeed, it is only أُلُوا الْأَلْبَابِ who will take a lesson. It is only they who will take a lesson. Who are أُلُوا الْأَلْبَابِ Those who reflect those who go to the core of something, those who understand the essence of the matter, they understand the essence, the main point, the crux, that what is being said, what do we have to do? Those whose focus is the amal, that what is it that I'm supposed to do over here? So, إِنَّمَا يَتَذَكَّرُ أُولُو الْأَلْبَابِ It is only such people who take a lesson. If you think about it, at the beginning of the ayah, who is mentioned? A person who remains constantly devoted to Allah who worships Allah in the hours of the night why? out of the fear of Allah hoping for reward from Allah when can a person have fear of Allah? when can a person hope reward from Allah? when he has knowledge when he has knowledge of the hereafter only then will he have fear and hope knowledge is essential and when he will have that knowledge it will translate into action True knowledge translates into action. So when he has knowledge of the hereafter, he will have fear of the hereafter. He will have fear of the hisab. He will have fear of the wazan. He will have fear of the sirat, of the burden of sins, of the record of deeds. And when he will have that fear, he will not be able to sleep. He cannot relax. He cannot remain heedless. No. It will make him restless. And it will make him do more. It will make him struggle. Then a person cannot sleep endlessly in his bed, forgetting about the time of Fajr, forgetting about the time of making dua to Allah, forgetting about the time of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, he can never sleep like that. Because for him, sleep is what? 
a loss of life. And he knows that every moment of life is precious. Every single moment. And he knows that if he sleeps through something, then he is going to miss it. And if he misses it, then there is accountability in the hereafter. He knows that at Fajr time, the angels are leaving, the angels are coming. My report is going to my Lord. So, يَحْذَرُ الْآخِرَةَ وَيَرْجُوا رَحْمَةَ رَبِّي How does this begin? With knowledge. This is why Allah says, قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ They are not the same. The one who knows, his actions will change. And the one who does not know, then he will forget Allah. He will not remember Allah. He will remain heedless. And he will keep on following his desires. If he sleeps, he will keep sleeping. If he eats, he will keep eating for a very long time. There is no balance. There is no moderation. There is no fear of accountability. So what's the key? Knowledge. And such knowledge that translates into action. Beneficial knowledge. This is why we should keep making dua to Allah for what kind of ilm? That is nafir, that is beneficial. And seek refuge with Allah against knowledge that is not beneficial, that only makes a person arrogant. So, قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ إِنَّمَا يَتَذَكَّرُ أُلُوا الْأَلْبَابِ It is only those people who have intellect, who use their reason, who use their mind, who will take a lesson. And thus they will bring about a change in their actions.